A name that probably at this point should need no introduction. Speaking of uh, names that don't need introduction, part two with Bud Green. No time to waste. Part two of our conversation with Bud Grant about his, uh, well, 75-year friendship with Sid. And I think we pick it up with more University of Minnesota time and connections between the two of them. As much as he became very much a supporter of the pro teams, as you know, starting, I think, certainly, well, eventually with the Vikings, most of all, once the Lakers left, in my time with him, I always sensed that there was something special about his feelings regarding the University of Minnesota. That was, even above the Vikings, above all of them, that was on its own plateau. Do you do you agree? I, I don't disagree at all. And he, uh, for not having ever attended college or, never, or, or the university, I think he got up because when he worked for the newspapers, he was what they called a stringer. I mean, he would go to the games or he'd go to practices and he'd, he'd provide information for some of the other writers or uh, current events. If something happened, if somebody got hurt or some, you know, something happened in, in that area, Sid was there. He, had, he knew it, and he, uh, that was his grounding, I think, was the University of Minnesota. It was a love that he carried his whole life, and if anything, he had one wish. It was the university would do well. And you know, any sport. I mean, he you know he knew the Mariucci's, he knew the you know the Gills, and, and he knew all the great players at the University of Minnesota on a close personal basis. He made it a point to ingratiate himself to everybody that played at the University of Minnesota. I don't know anybody that had anything to do with the university that had anything bad, but they say about Sid Hartman. In his reporting, is how he how they how he was how they were treated by him in his columns, and in the fact that he may have knew a lot of stuff that he didn't put on, put on the radio or put in the newspaper, simply because it wasn't appropriate, and they appreciated that and they trusted Sid implicitly. You spent, as you said, so much time with him. What did you guys talk about? <laughs> You know, surprisingly, we talked a lot about family, and that's where you get close to people. He knew my wife and my kids, and he grew up with them. And and uh, he would, when I was in Winnipeg, for example, as a player, and then at later, he'd come to Winnipeg just overnight, just to to see us, to see the family, to go to a game, to you know, keep up to date. Um, and you know, at that one time, Sid did not have much of a family. Uh, family Chad came into his life, which was a great uh, thing for his, for Sid and and his other family relationship. But he's very very close to my family. My kids think the world of Sid. He's like a grandfather to all of them. And uh, I don't know. I think at a, at a younger impressionable age like we were, uh, you know that it's an imprint that stays there. And it was he has been very close to this family for many many years. You've talked a little bit about when you first met him. What 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 were your initial impressions of him? Anything stand out from those days? <laughs> well, uh, the first when I was in, in the, during the war, I was in the, in the Navy at that time, and, and the other I played on the basketball team at Great Lakes, and we came to Minnesota uh, to play a basketball game, and uh, and the, this the guy came up to me and said. First thing he said, he introduced, I don't know if he introduced himself even, but he said, where are you going to go to college? <laughs> <laughs> he was way ahead of us. I said, who, are, who, who is this guy? <laughs> well, he introduced himself. Well, I'm Sid Hartman, which meant nothing to me at that time. But that was his first, it, it, it's an inclination as to what his, you know, he wanted, he wanted a scoop. Where was I going to go to college? At that time, I was considering Notre Dame and Wisconsin and Iowa and Minnesota. And that, that was, hmm. That's what I met Sid. The second time I saw him, I walked up. Uh, I enrolled at the University of Minnesota after the service, 
And I walked in the cook hall my first day at the campus, and I walked in the door, and there was Sid Hartman standing there, or walking in with me, actually, introduced himself, and I didn't remember him because of his his brash nature <laughs> nature when we met uh, at, at the basketball game. I remembered him. We walked in. That was his first day as a beat reporter. There's a difference between a stringer and a beat, and he had a beat now. The Minnesota University, University of Minnesota was his beat. He was working for the Times at that time, and he was a beat reporter, and and uh, we walked in together, and that our, our careers par- went, went from that point up to, to date, and uh, we've been, you know, close personal friends, and um, well, I, that doesn't even express how close it is. It's not just that you're a friend, but your confidant, your you know your emotions, your families, and your your decisions, and and most and all the decisions that Sid made or I made, we shared with one another before we actually made them. In most cases, equity there, right? I mean, that's built up over in your case, in the case of you two, decades. That's what well, well, keeps I, that thing did. and nurtures it and makes it powerful. Correct. Well, that's right. Now, Sid is, is uh, as I've mentioned or will mention again, that uh, there's nobody in my life that I've had closer or longer than Sid Hartman. Now, he was 100 years old. I'm 93. It's, I've, I've known Sid longer than I've known my parents or my kids or anybody I've ever worked with or my wife. Sid and I have been friends longer than anybody I've ever had in my lifetime. Will you tell the story about, uh, Bud, when you you wanted to give him the scoop that you were going to retire, and the plan was you guys were going to go over to Hawaii to do that, where I'm presuming the owners were, and um, what took place that prevented him from traveling with you all the way on that final leg to Hawaii? Well, you got to understand, the Sid wants to know things first. He's not so as interested in being second or third. He wants to know things first, and it doesn't have to be major. But uh, you know, he, he's always anticipating, you know, what your future plans are. And we talked a lot about that. And he, I also said, you know, if ever you're going to change jobs or or you get fired or you're going to move, you know, let me know first. Uh, he didn't. He didn't actually say it that way. But he expected that he would be privy to anything that I might do in my life first. Well, I decided that I was going to retire from coaching, so I asked Sid uh, to travel with me to Los Angeles. Uh, he said, why? I said, well, i got a scoop for you. <laughs> well, that's good enough for Sid. <laughs> so we got an airplane on the airplane. I said, no, I want you to come to Hawaii with me. Because I'm going to tell Max Winter that I'm retiring, and I want you know you to be be there when this happens. He's a good friend of Max's, and there might be some story involved. Well, I've come to find out, which I did not know at the time, that Sid did not like he had a phobia, if that's the right word, to travel over water. <laughs> now, don't ask me to explain that. He said, "I will not fly over water. I will not go to Hawaii with you." What's the story? <laughs> As well. So I had to tell him the story in Los Angeles. That I'm I'm stepping down, and but he couldn't use it until I had the chance to tell Max Winter and Mike Lynn who were in Hawaii at the time. So that's that's that's, that's really what happened. And so Sid held the story until I could inform Max and Mike that I was stepping down, and then he could, he could use the, the he, but he had the he had the scoop, which in 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 your in your People's lingo is That's it. kind of important. That's everything. And for him, yeah. it was absolutely <laughs> yeah. everything, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you ever get, I, ever get mad at him? Well, we disagreed on a number of things, not not of a major nature, but we talked about a lot of things, and, and he was a confidant. And like, like he said himself, he said he never made a major decision until he talked to me about it, not that he talked to me, not that he wanted advice, but he'd run it by me, or I'd run it by him. Um, and not necessarily major things, but, you know, family things and, and uh, you know, working relationships and decisions on what, you know, what 
you know, where do I buy a new car or how do I get a new refrigerator or something, things like that. We we talked about a lot of not necessarily earth shattering things, but we shared a lot of our feelings, you know, just because we're friends. You know, as we wrap up here, Bud, it, it occurs to me, you know this better than I, that we're talking about someone who um, is uh, a one of a kind. I mean, there's never going to be another guy. The conditions aren't going to be the same. He is utterly unique. He is historic in Minnesota sports. And I'm talking to another historic voice from Minnesota sports as well, which is I'm trying to wrap my head around. that. That's pretty tough to do. But you guys both... I think represents so much on the basis of what you came from, what you what what made you what you are, and you're both kind of in that same category. Well, I've said I've used this analogy. You know, in your lifetime, you're lucky if you've got two or three good friends. Now, in a lifetime, you will go through many friends and many acquaintances and many business people. And in the sporting world, many you know personalities that you run into, but you're lucky if you got a couple that are close. And I, it's, I've been very fortunate, and I think Sid might have expressed the same thing that we, you know, we were close personal friends. I mean, we could trust one another with what we want, what our thoughts were, what our emotions were, and what we're thinking, what our future looked like. And uh, you know, it's it's a great. Uh, asset to have to have a friend like Sid Hartman, and if you use the word Sid in this Midwest, there's only one Sid. We'll leave and, it. And everybody knows who you're talking about if you just mention Sid. Sid Hartman was that that person. Bud, always a pleasure. I really appreciate the time as as always, and uh, stay well. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> as well as I can, well, you bet. as well as you can. That's all we can ask. Thanks again for the time, Bud. Much appreciated. Thank you, Bud Grant. Ninety-three, talking about his friend Sid Hartman, one hundred years old. One last chance to put a grant in your hand, guards. Thanks to Wix and Jewelers. Text happy to two hundred two hundred. That's your keyword. Text happy to two hundred two hundred. Show wrap and a couple final thoughts on a very unusual edition.